Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsession will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dark down for a Hi, Jackie Cation here. You're listening to The Dork Forest. You know the websites, dorkforest.com, thedorkforest.com, if you like a determiner. JackieCation.com has everything. Both of my podcasts, all of the stand-up stuff, the new album, links to YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all the things. But so, I think, does dorkforest.com, where you can look at old videos of different shows. Anyway, if you want to support the show... Tell people about the show, review it on iTunes, thumbs it up on Pandora or Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. I appreciate that. You can donate. You can donate monthly. PayPal lets you do that. You can also do my Venmo if you like. It's at Jackie Cation absolutely everywhere. And my email address is Jackie at JackieCation.com. And that's what the PayPal is. The PayPal link is on JackieCation.com and DorkForest.com. And go to any of them. Thanks for listening. There's merch. There's stand up there's tour guide you know you can find out where i'm touring this is getting long so let's get into the show it's happening i'm jackie cation and uh i'm in my garage and i am <laughs> sitting here with a uh, barbara melee and uh you are going to uh, i'm very excited it's when this comes out it's going to be right around your birthday i believe that's right april fools april fools that's the first of april you guys I'm not kidding. And um, uh, Barbara Mele, her Twitter handle is at B, as in Barbara, MC, as in Mick, MC, and then Mele, M-E-L-E. It'll be in the notes. So if you want to follow her on Twitter, and at the very least, uh, say happy birthday. Do that. And then, <laughs> uh, and but we're going to dork out about flowers, and, and maybe she might post on her birthday where you could send her flowers. And that would be hilarious. And because uh, you like flowers, what's happening? I don't know a lot about flowers. Yeah. They're very pretty. Oh my gosh. There's so much I can tell you about flowers. Um, so it all started when I was okay. a wee toddler and uh, my grandmother was a landscape architect. So my earliest memories are hanging out in the garden with her and, you know, learning all about plants. Um, but she had seven daughters. And my mom is the only one who did not also become a landscape architect. Oh my God. So yeah. Seriously, uh, six daughters and they all became landscape ar architects? Seven, seven daughters. Or and six, three boys. Six, and oh, hi. Catholic much? Irish? Yeah. Bingo uh, on the nose. Oh, that's <laughs> I, I'm familiar with uh, the genre. Yeah. Irish, Spanish, Catholic. So well, there you go. Fair enough. All sides. Um, all sides. So yeah. Catholic. Yes. yes. Um, so uh, I wanted to do something that, you know, connected with like these really great memories I had from childhood, but not sort of, I guess, like betray my mom. <laughs> um, <laughs> she didn't I, like it. <laughs> well, it just, it would have seemed sort of like I, I was calling out allegiance to a different part of the family, right? If I went and did what all of her sisters did. Right. Um, what, did what did you, can I quickly ask what your, what did your mother do? She has her master's in child art therapy. So oh. super different path, <laughs> different path, but still cool. She might yes. paint a flower. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. And uh, so, yeah. So for some reason to me, that translated to working in a flower shop. And um, so I got my first job when I was 18 and now it's over 20 years later. And right. I literally have not had a job outside of flowers in over 20 years. The flower industry mm -hmm. is where you work. And right. um just so people know, I don't know if uh, if the name on the side of the video, uh, Pete is your husband. Yes, and it's his <laughs> Zoom account, and that's yes. fine. Yeah, uh, don't yeah, let us not sweat it. Uh, but the uh, so, well, here's the weird thing: is that um, what is so so you go into flowers, mm -hmm. you the now know what about I mean I don't. Here's, here's all I know. When I was a kid, my stepmother told me that carnations were lame. So never get her carnations. 
that they were somehow and we're from a little factory town in uh she's from Kanae. i'm from south milwaukee we grew up in you know she grew up in Kanae, never really went anywhere and um she's like they're kind of white trash jackie carnation <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> and uh, you're like, oh, okay. All right. I won't get you carnations. I'm nine. So what do I know from flowers? <laughs> and um, so first of all, the much maligned carnation. What do you mm-hmm. think of that? So actually, uh, I, I do know from uh, having spoken to lots of people over the years that what flowers can be obtained geographically is very different from one place to the next. So for example, in New York city, we're a port city, right? So it's much easier and faster for us to get flowers that to get to like, you could get orchids. You could, yes, their things are coming in Mm -hmm. and all right. Um, See, you know, some stuff about flowers. No, I just, I I read a mystery novel where the guy really liked orchids. So they were, it might've been, it was, uh, Hercule Poirot possibly oh my gosh I used to watch his stuff when I was a kid <laughs> yeah I think it's uh it's on PBS and um mm-hmm. but he was he, he was it him and it might have been a hero a guy named hero and whatever it was it was an old-timey mystery series that I thoroughly enjoyed but uh he was very very heavy and he never left the house and people <laughs> would bring the mystery to him mm-hmm. and he would be in his attic working with orchids doing kind this of miss possibly. that from the show yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a well-known uh floristry gesture yes. <laughs> so uh yeah so that's all i don't really know anything about orchids except for that they're kind of hard to to keep alive they actually are very long lasting even cut um but because they're exotic right they either have to be they're actually genetically grown from uh slices of stem that then they get put into like petri material and that's and they get replicated so hundreds of plants from the same one piece then grow into like hundreds of individual new plants do orchids <laughs> occur in nature or do, were they, they genetically modified they do but in nature they uh grow symbiotically on other trees like in the rainforest oh, so okay the cost of like growing them in a lab versus constantly having to harvest them in a rainforest you know yeah yeah um yeah so uh i worked in chicago for a couple of years as a florist and um there they absolutely were would say yes use the carnations use the lilies use the moms the roses the baby's breath and if i ever went to touch an orchid they'd be like no 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 we have to keep that for the special clients. <laughs> so um, I could very much see in Milwaukee carnations being, I've never heard them called the white trash of flowers, but that's amazing. <laughs> it's well, it's, I think they were, she was just, they, they might've been overused. And so mm-hmm. possibly calling, and I get to use that term, you guys, that's it. This is, uh, this is the whitest of whitey magoos in the whole wide world. <laughs> so uh, that's the way it goes. And so if you're all mad about it, so sad, too bad, get over it. And right. um, I'm the Joe Rogan of, of, of calling carnations out. So, uh, (laughs) ridiculous, but, uh, so what, what about, um, yeah. So how many, how many different places have you worked as a florist? Have you, have you done, have you done destination floral trips? I have, I have taught uh, floral design in Mexico in Monterrey. Really? Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, Okay, so you have been different places where clearly, obviously, geographically, as you were saying, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there are different flowers to be had. So is the longest place you've worked in New York? Yes. Okay, so how, so you, 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 you start working at a florist shop is mm-hmm. the first, the first thing is don't touch the orchids. Don't right. touch the expensive flowers because you're going to break them. Mm-hmm. How, how do you break a flower? If you're a florist and you're Uh, you're brand new. (laughs) Lots of ways. (laughs) Um, So actually, I broke a lot of flowers my first week because I was in a totally brand new style of shop in the city. And um, they wanted to teach everybody basically from scratch. So they were excited that I didn't have any previous experience, which always when I had walked into a shop and said, hey, I'll sweep your floors. I don't care. I just want to learn. They'd be like, come back when you have experience. But sort of chicken and oh. an egg thing, yeah, right? Yeah. How are you gonna, yeah. 
Yeah, so I, uh, I got my first break in uh, my first year of college and there was kind of a um, intense Dutch woman who was teaching everybody how to make European hand tied bouquets. And uh, so she gave me a mix of flowers, showed me how to do it once and then said, okay, do that. And at the time, you know, I was like 17. I had only um, babysat or like answered the phones right. at my local church. So when they asked me how many hours I could work, I was like, I don't, whatever, here's my schedule, my class schedule, just work me around that. So for 55 hours, all I did was put these stems together and then take them back apart. And the Dutch women would just walk back and forth and not say a word. So I didn't know if I was improving or, right. <laughs> but the poor flowers were all like, like just <laughs> totally ready to give up at the end of 55 hours of handling. And what was, right. Cause you were, were you using the same like yes. 20 flowers yep. and what, what is, what kind of hand tied, what? What's it called? Uh, a hand tied bouquet. Okay. What is that? So um, it's a very European style. Usually the top of the bouquet is like, um, it's called a pave, which means pavement in French. It's very like flat. Um, and all the flowers have a chance to like really be visible rather okay. than if you do kind of like uh, different heights and stuff, you're giving more attention to one stem rather than another. Okay. So a bouquet like that, you might want to carry that if you were getting all married or walking around. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, what was in that? What is traditionally in that kind of bouquet? Uh, lots of like garden stems. So uh, roses for sure. Cause roses have always been around since like Roman times. Um, stuff like daisies because they're really hardy foliage because they support the flowers so that you know they show a little bit better right. and uh one of the key things with the hand tied is the mechanics of putting it together so um it's one of the like sort of misconceptions about floristry that people think like yeah it's flowers they grow on the side of the road you can <laughs> just scoop up a handful why do i have to pay you 50 dollars for a bouquet but um, right. it makes a big difference if you're putting the stems like vertically next to each other versus like adding every stem at an angle. And okay. when you do that, the flowers splay out more and you get like a fuller, you know, more attractive yeah, presentation. Yeah. I, so, I know that in some of the romance novels that I've I've read in the course of my hundred years, uh, <laughs> flower design was a skill that they would teach ladies. Um mm -hmm. To, and then there would be flowers in every room so, because it gave you it gave the women something to do right that, right instead you know. of revolution instead of murdering yes. everyone in their sleep <laughs> so good for them good for the look over there look how pretty those flowers are <laughs> yeah yeah no so, time for murder <laughs> no time for murdering uh you got flowers to to gather mm -hmm. so okay so if um so roses you said have been around as as a flower that people were psyched about since Roman times? Yeah, um, they actually, there's lots of fam of plants in the family of Rosaceae, which is a really big, right, branching out. So uh, apples are actually related to roses. Oh, we can eat apples. Um, rose hips and rose leaves are can be used medicinally for a lot of stuff. Um, and they kind of grow like nuts on their own. So yeah. Um, and then they could be cultivated so that the plants, they're one of the very few plants that uh, for floristry reliably produce. So they, um, the bushes have been hybridized. So they grow, they offer blooms every six weeks. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 Which you is... think most, most plants, like maybe you see the blooms for a couple of weeks and then their season's gone, but. We have uh, our, our orange tree and our lemon tree are both blooming. And. Oh, um, nice. That's it, early. It, <laughs> Well, I'm in Los Angeles, so yeah, but uh, um, March. Yeah, but that's uh, we usually have two crops of oranges a year. We get a crop in the winter, and then we get a crop in around July. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what the cycle is from a blooming of a thing to a um, to a to a, a fruiting of a thing. Well, it depends on the thing. On uh, the thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, there's always oranges on the tree. That's that, that I know there's always lemons on the tree. Mm -hmm. It's a Meyer lemon tree and a Valencia orange tree. Oh, so, you're so lucky. So lucky. 
very lucky. My mother-in-law has a neighbor with av- an avocado tree oh and, my it's gosh. Av- and it's avocado season right now. Uh-huh. So we go visit her once a week and we come home with 10 avocados and like she keeps right off the tree, right off the tree. And but it only, it's only for six weeks, mm-hmm. but I don't want to need an avocado ever again, except for those. <laughs> like those six weeks, it becomes a thousand avocados in my head. Yeah. And then, and then I'm like, I'm good. I don't need an avocado. I actually uh, just found out and tested it recently that you can um, freeze or refrigerate avocados until you're ready to eat them. How are you, are you opening it up or are you freezing it whole? Right in the skin, whole thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause we have three that need eating right now, right now. Matter of fact, I wonder leave right now. No. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't know how they would hold up if you froze yeah. them now. Right. Right. It, if they were ripe, but if they were just picked, they probably last longer than you could, uh, you could thaw right. them and, mm-hmm. and then they would ripen and then you could eat them. Right. But it might be too late for these six avocados. So I'll be having avocado toast. I'll be having <laughs> uh, different things with avocado. <laughs> Guacamole. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes we just eat avocado spoon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's delicious, but you could, um, uh, make a hair mask with some of those. Oh, could do that. Yeah. Yeah. Could, mm-hmm. could bring it off to the, uh, to the spoon the Korean spa that I go to sometimes they, they, they use put this in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, so what flowers are, um, now you want to do anecdotes about flowers or do you want to tell me your favorite flowers or do you want to do both? I can't, I can't really, it's really hard to say favorite flowers because I, like, I, I love them all. I actually think it's easier to say the ones I don't like. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah. so what would make you not like a flower? Uh, so there's one called Tweedia, which is really cute. It's a very pale blue and it's really tiny, but it reeks. It smells like when you cut it, it smells like, um, like cat musk. Oh, weird. And how do, how do you spell yeah. this? Spell it? Yeah. How do you the, spell that The flower? name of the flower? Yeah. Uh, tweed, like the like fabric. A twe- yeah. And then I-A. Tweedia, yeah. and mm-hmm. it the flowers don't smell. It cut. It smells when you cut it. Yeah, because they one of their a lot of plants have this. One of their like self defense mechanisms is if they get injured, um, they seep out different kinds of sap, and theirs happens to be really stinky, probably to warn animals away, right? right. So they don't eat them. Yeah. Yeah, but that is- it just they get all sticky. It's actually really toxic for your skin and your like. If you get it in your eyes, you can go blind. What? So, yeah, I, I just, don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think that you're wrong to not like that flower. This is a risk value equation <laughs> that I am not getting behind. Is anyone asking for a Tweedia in their? In, yeah. In their, do yep. they? Are they usually goth? What's happening? <laughs> Um, no, I think they are so married to like a pastel aesthetic that they just they have to have it. <laughs> and they've only just seen. So if you've cut them and they stink and mm-hmm. you try and you are wearing gloves and you don't touch your face mm-hmm. uh, and then you put it in, you know, you wrap it and you give it to them. Does it continue to stink when it gets to their house? So any stem universally starts to seal itself within seconds of being cut. So probably, you know, after five minutes, it won't continue to smell. So Um, they don't even know what they're doing. Right. They don't even know. And if they cut it again when they get home, because, you know, uh, and tell me if I'm wrong, you get a a bouquet of flowers uh, or you get some flowers, you're supposed to sort of cut them at an angle and then stick them in water. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> so many people don't understand that or realize it. Because oh, is it because the because the stem has sealed itself? Yeah. And then it can't drink. Yeah. Then it can't drink. So yep. once they get their Tweety at home, they're mm-hmm. and, and, and they're smart. They cut them again and they're like, oh, I have to rub my face. And then they go blind. <laughs> what is that smell? Yeah. And what is that? They wake up the smell? next morning with like a giant swollen nose. Oh, my gosh. Dum, da, dum, dum. So, um. Yeah, this this actually is a good uh, segue to an anecdote. Please. So um, I the first shop I worked in, I was in college and every spring it was really common to sell uh, paper white bulbs, which they're a type of narcissus. So the same family as daffodils. Oh, pretty. 
they're very, very fragrant. And a lot of people enjoy them because they're like, oh, spring is coming, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we would just sell the bulbs loose. And uh, the shop I was working at was on the Upper West Side, so very family neighborhood. We had a lot of regular customers. It was super sweet. And um, I had a husband come in a couple weeks after the wife had been in. And he was like, oh, do you guys still have those uh, onion things that, you know, you were selling? I'm like onion things. Um, <laughs> and he's like, he proceeds to tell me, yeah, my wife bought some and put them in the fridge to like keep them cold until she was ready to do something with them. And he thought they were some kind of weird shallot. He thought and they he, were an onion. He cut them and ate them and ended up in the hospital with poisoning. Dude. And I, I was a college kid, so I'm like, ah, uh, are you going to sue us? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> what to say to him? It's like, and, oh, no, uh, I survived. I thought it was funny. I, I thought it was funny, so I thought I'd get some more and give it to my buddy. You're like, no, no, <laughs> no, no, sir. Yes, please don't <laughs> yeah. do that. Please don't do that. That's uh, that. I do love a daffodil, though. I like. You know what I like? Mm -hmm. I like. I'm. I'm kind of like. It's not. It's not an exciting. You know, like I. It, I'm almost a caricature of a. Because there are people who like an exotic tweedia or an onion, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> I. I like a daffodil. I like a daisy. I like a tulip a great deal. You like happy um, flowers. I do enjoy a happy, happy flower because mm -hmm. uh, much like books, why read, why, why have a sad flower? Are there, wait a yeah. minute, are there sad flowers? What of would course. be a sad flower? What would it, yes. um, well, it's become a trend recently to dye and preserve flowers. So we can actually, um, there's lots of uh, flowers that are black now, which does appeal oh. to the goth crowd. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Um, but there are also flowers that are uh, typically associated with like death and mourning. So uh, white lilies are one of those um, tuber roses, which because they're very fragrant, um, it's not a rose. I, okay. I don't know why it's named that actually. Um, but does the it... fragrance, you know, a lot of the stronger smelling flowers help mask like oh, mask embalming. Death. And, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that has also always been like a very human thing. Right. To, to get the stinkiest flowers um, yes. for, for the, for the funeral or the wake yeah. at least. Mm -hmm. And um, what about calla lilies? Are those a, a funeral? Is that a funeral flower or? I, I think they had a moment in like the early nineties cause everything <laughs> was very uh, not retro, but like, you know, like the really sleek lines on stuff and yeah. callas are a very sleek line flower. They're, um, they're, they're tall too, aren't they? Yeah, they're actually, they come in really different ones. So there's the the big ones that are in Diego Rivera's paintings. Those okay. are called open cut callas. Um, and they're in his paintings because they're natively grown in Mexico. So they're huge, like the biggest, the most beautiful callas you can get. Um, but then there's also mini callas, which the heads are like only a couple inches big. And they come in every color, almost every color you can think of. Oh, that's cool. And yeah. it just occurred to me, we have a plant that our neighbor gave us. Uh, it's a dragon fruit plant. Whoa. And it only blooms at night, um, like once every three to six months. Mm -hmm. And But the thing is, is we've never gotten a fruit off of it because it to be pollinated, the bug doesn't live here. And... Uh. Um, and Andy said that he was talking with Ruck, our neighbor, who's uh, from Thailand. Uh, and Ruck is like, well, if you diddle the flower stems like, inside. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what are you fingering the flowers? That's a lot. Yeah. And, um, and so Andy has tried it. Uh, you know, no success it, yet. No success <laughs> yet. But I believe Ruck next door, they had a dragon fruit. They got one. So Ruck has just a really good technique. <laughs> Technique is a big part of a floral design. <laughs> exactly, exactly. He has a very, they have a, they have a, uh, him and his wife are actually very good with their garden and they have a lot of things that flower that are very pretty. Andy likes flowers more than me. I like um, vegetables. So mm -hmm. uh, I have a, I have, I plant the vegetable garden and he plants the flowers. So. Well, it's good because the uh, pollinators are happy with both. So they'll bounce around 
yeah, and yeah, so they're psyched. They're psyched to have mm-hmm. the selection. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, okay. So, so what are some of the like people come in? Mm-hmm. And because a lot of a florist, the job at a, at a, at a, at a shop, a flower shop is customer service. Yes. And you want to work with flowers, not with people. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I actually am an extrovert. So I do enjoy, you know, I, I've definitely had days where I wake up on the wrong side of the bed and I don't want anybody to talk to me, but I, you know, my first customer just starts chit chatting and like, Oh, okay. I'm better now. Yeah, 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 it is. I mean, sometimes you just need a little social to, to get you out of the the, yeah. the funk anyway. So mm-hmm. what um so but is there is there a job in the florist shop where you wouldn't like oh, you just spend the whole day in the back? I mean, I think even if you only work in the office, you have to answer the phones. But there right. are a lot of shops that operate with people who um, exclusively condition the flowers. So what is chop that? everything. Okay. So so they don't come ready to go, right? They uh they get cut a couple of days before they arrive in the shop, and they have to be treated with like really cold air, with sealants on the bottom of the stems, hydrators, and uh, and then they travel right to get from the farms to the shops. Um. So when they arrive, you have to kind of you know, judge them, wake them right? up a bit. Sure. And um. You're yeah, a flower so- fluffler fluffer it's it's flower fluffing and so many ways to fluff flowers <laughs> how many ways though because what i mean the thing is is if if you get a, the flowers and they're now they're three days old and they've been mm-hmm. treated and they're cold mm-hmm. do you is is there is what's the path to sort of get them into the case so that people go oh my gosh i want that so it, it really depends on the stem structure. Um, so stuff like tulips and daffodils are really great at retaining water. Um, you sometimes don't even have to cut them, like recut them. You just put them right in water and they will absorb through the stems. Okay. Like not even through um, the bottom, but through the sides. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Um, yeah. So they're super easy. And then um, stuff like roses, they actually have very uh, fibrous stems. So what helps them hydrate really well is uh, capillary action. So you wanna recut the stem and put it in very hot water, not boiling, it should be like a warm bath. So okay. you use your wrist or your fingers, right? Just oh, make like sure a it's baby. like a baby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you put really, really hot water on the stems and then you put them in the fridge again where they're cold and the differential temperatures, like the water shoots right up to the flower. It still takes about six hours, but then like they're fully hydrated and they will still last another two weeks when they get to somebody's house. Oh, that's, so, yeah. Cause that's a big deal too, right? Is how long yeah. are they going to last when you when they leave the shop, mm-hmm. can, if you walk into another shop, mm-hmm. like, uh, can you tell how skilled they are by what's what you're looking at? Well, I think um, like display is is one indicator, right, of how they're caring for the flowers. Um, another one is I think that people have this kind of like they get scared, like, oh, flowers are complex or they never last for me, but it's actually a lot like shopping for produce. Okay. So um, like if you see, <laughs> you know, a banana or an apple has a brown spot, like obviously it got bruised somewhere. It's the same with flowers with of that, all kinds. That makes so, sense. Yeah. Like uh, the stem should be green and fresh looking. They shouldn't be like starting to yellow or get spots. Um, yeah. Okay. That makes, that makes perfect sense actually. Uh, because the reason it has a spot is because there's trouble. Uh, right. yeah. <laughs> something is happening. Um, now, <clears throat> uh, so this is going by so fast. We're at like, 20, <laughs> we're at like almost a half an hour, but, uh, the, I wanted to ask you, so did you go to school and learn about stem structure and, and, and that thing, or did you just learn on the job? So, um, I learned a lot from my grandmother and yep. I did learn design. I, I learned on the job. Um, but it's actually one of the newer developments, newer, like in the past 20 years, not 20 years. 
yeah, maybe about 20 years. So right when I started working in a flower shop, um, flower schools started to open and become a thing. So now there are avenues for people who, if they want to get into the field or they're not sure, they want to find out more, they can take some classes and find out what it's like to work with the flowers. And um, is it is it like, is it botany? Is it, are you studying stamen? St- st- you know how there's different parts of a yeah, plant. stamens, pistols. Yes. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Seventh grade biology. <laughs> well, you know, I once went to, there is a glass flower exhibit in Boston, Massachusetts. Wow. Um, it is at the Harvard Natural Museum, mm-hmm. and they are hand blown glass. It's called the flower exhibit. Okay. And it's in Harvard, mm-hmm. uh, in their natural museum. And in the late 1800s, early 1900s, German botanists uh, glass blew uh, different parts of plants so that uh, people could study plants huh. for science. Yeah, because they'd be they wouldn't die. They wouldn't right? die. You could you could really get in there and see like the cut stems and the different parts of, and then they ship these glass things from Germany. To, to Boston, to Harvard. And it's an entire, like two, I think it's at least one giant room. It might be two, two rooms now of small rooms. And there's just l- signs on every case. Do not lean against the case. Uh, do not lean <laughs> against the case. And Andy took me to it when we were in Boston once many years ago, because he thought it would be pretty. Mm -hmm. He thought it would be tulips and it would be, you know, when when you go and see, you know, you go to the fair, someone's blowing glass. They're making unicorns and and daisies and (laughs) daffodils. Uh, This thing was not beautiful, but it was beautiful because it Mm -hmm. was science and it was amazing. Uh, But I think if you ever make it to Boston, you should look into seeing that that flower exhibit at the Harvard Natural because it's open to the public. That and it's called the flower exhibit. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, so this is part of why I've been in this for over two decades is because there's always like some new, you know, like uh, knowledge or way of working with flowers. Like it's it's such a big world and you can um, really pick your your lane, you know, like. Yeah. Um, so I really love teaching floral design, but that didn't really become a thing until recently. OK. Um, and uh, or you could work events or you could only do gifts or sympathy designs. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Or you could work in the growing side, like or the wholesale side. Yeah. Yeah. There's like business side and then there's design side and then yep. there's science side. Yeah. And uh, and so you are are you getting to teach floral design more? Yes. Uh, I'm teaching for the New York Botanical Gardens. That's neat. Yes, it's very cool. Um, and I, with a good friend of mine who teaches photography and social media, we're going to be um, sort of like touring a class uh, this summer. Okay. So, Where, how would people, how would people find that? What's that called? Um, so they, it's called Style and Shoot. And um, I get the, it. The, <laughs> 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 <Phew>. <laughs> um <laughs> That is going to be uh, July 30th through the Botanical Gardens. And then in August up in Ch- Chautauqua, New York. Okay. Um, with the Women's Club. But I don't remember the date off the top of my head. But style and shoot. Are you guys going to have your own Instagram kind of situation? And, and uh... Yeah, I mean, because it's, it's, it's definitely part of the equation, right? Like you can make the most beautiful thing. But if you take a crap photo of it, people won't appreciate right. it, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And there's lots of like silly little tricks that can give you a better photo. Okay. And so, but you're teaching people how to do, to do floral design, like sort of like the, Mm -hmm. like the very angry Dutch woman. Yes. Uh, (laughs) But but hopefully (laughs) with a little more feedback and you're like, I don't just need to 50 hours of how does that look? And um, that'd be torture for me and the student. (laughs) (laughs) Right. So how do you start to teach? Like, is it, do you start to teach people how to, um, how to, how, how to do, how to design bouquets and flowers and so I I think a really good place to start no matter what 
um, level of familiarity people have is the conditioning because there's always like better ways or some people find that uh, one way works better for them than another. Okay. And that could be like the minerals that are in your water. It could be the temperature of where they're hydrated. You know, there's so many factors. So, um, and I didn't learn like proper conditioning on the job. I actually learned it when I first started teaching like six or seven years ago. Oh, um, okay. So, you know, there's like on the fly out of necessity, necessity, and then there's like the right way to do it. <laughs> right, right. Like somebody, somebody put some thought into it. There was trial mm-hmm. and error. Science was involved. Yes. Uh, and then there's someone wants to own a flower shop and they're like, well, this is what I do. And it usually works. Right. And, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but- um, People don't have to trial and error it so much anymore because of the flower schools and because uh, there's an organization called Society of American Florists, which is SAF for short. Um, And uh, you can, there's different membership levels, but they they do very much like they're involved in the horticultural side, the science side, um, the design side. So uh, they're part of the Philadelphia Flower Show every year, which is really cool. Um, yeah. Uh, do you go to flower shows? Um, I've been to a few, but I guess, I don't know. I, everybody has like their own style too. Mm -hmm. Um, and the stuff that they do at the show is, is very technical and usually involves, um, hard materials, like non-floral stuff, which is like, they turn it into like Comic-Con. Yes. And it's It's like like not my jam at all no, no you you just want all flowers i don't need to see the fx mm-hmm. uh right it doesn't need yeah. to have christmas lights in it <laughs> just make the flowers work you 100 yeah. percent get it <laughs> yeah yeah because i mean i i liked i like a tech convention as much as the next person mm-hmm. but if i went to a flower convention i would want to see the flowers i once went to get this a beach glass convention what yes uh and it was not good i know that you are not <laughs> and uh, but i when i was a kid i freaking loved beach class right uh-huh. i grew up next to lake michigan people used to drink and drive their boats and throw their beer glasses <laughs> over beer bottles over the into lake michigan and so you would walk on the beaches and you would find brown and green you know heineken you'd be pretty mm-hmm. psyched uh brown yeah <laughs> <laughs> you get a pale blue one like <gasps> the mermaid <gasps> like, oh my god the red <laughs> red was like the gold standard of uh <laughs> there was never any gold anyway so but there would be different colored beach glass and so i was in erie pennsylvania one year with maria bamford working a very terrible comedy club that is probably better now but uh we did two <laughs> things we hope. In, in erie pennsylvania that 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 weekend we went to their art museum which was a nickel and had one of each they had a matisse but it was a drawing they had a (laughs) statue from japan but there was just the one of them Mm -hmm. and so i mean it was a very small but actually quite beautiful little art museum Mm -hmm. and it was seven dollars to go and we went and it was and but there was also a convention for beach glass at the erie pennsylvania convention like a whole convention yeah. And so I was like, I really want to go to that. It was $15 a piece and it was lame and I was not happy. And then Maria was like, there's an art museum. And I was like, I'm going to be disappointed again. And she was like, let's try. <laughs> and so we went and it was $7 and it was so much better. But uh, yes. So beach glass, I wanted it just to be sort of, here's a rare piece of beach glass mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it's red. I really wanted to see a red piece of beach glass, but it was people who had found, you know, brown and green beach glass and turned it into earrings. I was really, truly disappointed. Oh, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that does sound like a bummer. <laughs> it was lame. It did. It was a clock eater, though. It really it really took up. Uh, <laughs> it was, it got us out of the hotel room. Uh, <laughs> You went the whole room, like holding out hope there was going to be a sculpture or something made out of beach glass. Come on. It needs to be at all. How cool would that have been? Is if if someone had found enough beach glass to recreate a beer bottle? Anything, Mm -hmm. literally at this point. So what were you, what, what are some of your favorite um, 
sort of floral moments like of your career or of 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 just kind of cool things that you've seen other people do or that you got to do um so i uh one of my favorite weddings that i ever designed for somebody um it it wasn't like through me it was through the shop i was working with but i was the creative director so i was you know meeting the clients and talking them through ideas and budgets and everything and um this girl, I think it started with an email. She said, I have a $2,000 budget, but she was, the wedding was going to be at Liberty Warehouse, which is kind of a little bit more pricey venue in Brooklyn. Cause you know, it's very hipster. Okay. Um, and so she came in for the meeting and had the, the diagram of her whole layout and like, we're going to walk in through here. And I want all these moments along the way. And then I want the arch and and I just really, frankly, and upfront said to her, like, okay, but you know, this isn't a $2,000 wedding, right? This right. is more like 10 or 15. And I guess it was just maybe, you know, because of where she was in the process of planning, she said, oh, I totally, I get it. It's totally, let's, let's just work it out. Right. Okay. And um, so then two of the most memorable uh, moments in my career came out of that wedding. So one was when we went back at the end of the night to um, break down. Yeah. And um, she was like, so overjoyed. You could tell she had the best day and it was perfect. That's and, so cool. you know, we're, we're coming in like when everybody's leaving, we're not really supposed to be seen or anything, but she like threw her arms around me and was like, Barbara, everything was perfect. You were so magical. And it was just like, yep, this, this is what I'm in it for. Oh, you know? that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and then the other memorable part of that was uh the people who worked at the venue obviously like they do this day in and day out so they're over it right they just mm. want to get out of there right um so they were turning the lights off on us okay. and as they're walking out they're like uh don't make a mess and right <laughs> then like right at the exact same moment is when my husband had his hands on uh, a 20 inch cylinder full of water and sand and glass and went to pick it up and it whoosh, collapsed in his hands. <laughs> it's just water and stones like ran everywhere. <laughs> oh my God. God. I'm so glad the lights were off. So that <laughs> they didn't no, see this happen. No witnesses. No witnesses. Yeah. We'll clean yeah. it up. And um, somehow also miraculously his, he got no cuts. Like I was going to say, uh, if it crushed into itself, he might've cut his hands really nope. bad. Not that is, that is anything. outstanding. Yeah. You know, it's interesting flowers, my wedding, I had a wedding, you guys, and, um, I didn't know anything about it. All I knew <laughs> was that we were going to get married at this dim sum restaurant at, in downtown Los Angeles and 200 people were coming because I was 39 years old. And when Holy you get married crap. later, uh, everyone comes because it's a spectacle and everyone's <laughs> like, Oh, I thought you were dead. Half of my relatives. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, they're like, you're getting married to a man. <laughs> What's happening. So it went on, you know, it went on like that, but here's the scoop. Joe Wilson, one of the original hosts of the dark forest. If you go back 2006 to, I believe 2010, um, Joe Wilson, co-host, delightful, delightful man, love him dearly. He now lives in Albany, New York with his wife, Kathy Zaloga, who Kathy Zaloga is a florist. And I've always hey. wanted her to come on and talk about flowers. And um, so she used to do the flowers for the Super Bowl every year. Whoa. And she would always do Christmas trees at, I think it was Eddie Murphy's house. <laughs> he wanted like six Christmas trees mm -hmm. and um, whatever it was, their gift to me for the wedding was she did the flowers mm -hmm. and which now I know was a $10,000 value and uh, was a boat ton of money. All I know was, and he essentially orchestrated it. Mm -hmm. He was like, they, he, he was He's an incredibly yeah. organized man. The spouses and, of florists are, are long suffering yeah. saints. <laughs> right. He's done a lot of heavy lifting. There's been yeah. a lot of he, schlepping. Of, yep. They get of, sucked okay. in one way or the other. <laughs> get sucked in. He got yep. sucked in. He was like, they're paying me, but I'm not going to tell you <laughs> that this is something I would have chosen to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only here because of you, Jackie. <laughs> exactly. I'm only yeah. here. Right. And so, um, I, 
but that but you have told and the flowers were gorgeous they were gorgeous she made it my bouquet she made um the bouquet for my sister who was my matron of honor and uh mm-hmm. you know very lovely and and then there were some flowers and i did not know and then she broke it all down like, so much work <laughs> so much work the two of them yeah. i literally i just i just sent him um i don't know is is marijuana legal in new york uh medicinally yes and the laws are here are kind of funny like you can have up to a certain amount on your person but you okay. can't be using it Oh, weird. In public. Yeah. Yeah. Watch me eat the gummy bear. It's not touching my mouth. <laughs> no, you can't hire. You, no, no, no. And so I just um, licked it. I'm done. <laughs> uh, that's weird. Uh, yeah. Cause I just, uh, so I didn't send him anything anyway. Uh, but mm. he enjoys cause it's legal here and, uh, and I don't, yeah. use, I don't use it cause I fall asleep, but, um, but he enjoys it <laughs> and we are friends so uh mm-hmm. what, um, what um did sh- did she like ask for your input or you just were like make it purple and she like ran with it she knew what the colors were that was it because mm-hmm. it was it was at a chinese restaurant and i decided to co-opt uh chinese culture she uh, <laughs> she actually helped me uh choose my i i tried to pick my wedding dress alone mm-hmm. and i can't i dress like this this is not okay (laughs) so i got this outfit and i and then it was terrible and i cried and i was like i'm gonna look super dumb and so i called kathy and kathy was like well there is a wedding dress store do you want to go to the (laughs) wedding dress store jackie (laughs) and i was like yes let's go to the wedding dress store we went and we bought i it was a bridesmaid's dress Mm mm-hmm and it was, th- I think it was $300 and it was red. And yep. funnily enough, the dim sum place, it's now closed, but uh, the dim sum place was enormous. Our side ha- had my wedding uh, with my husband. We got married to each other, 200 people. <laughs> and then on the other side was a, chi- a wedding with a Chinese couple who wore white. They co-opted oh. uh, the Whitey Magoo. Uh, huh. So yeah. everything was in balance. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was very yin and yang, you guys. Uh, yeah. And, but it was, yeah, no, she did not ask. She just. Well, that's uh, okay. Which is good because she was the professional. I was like, well, you'll know better than me what mm-hmm. what uh, what will look good and what will look right as people push dim sum carts around. I don't, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted there to be enough food. <laughs> I, uh, and, I got really lucky when I got married because. Uh, Pete came to see me at work and I was working with a black calla lily and he went what's that can we have that in our wedding and uh, so then I had a direction otherwise I I don't know what I would have I would have been trying to decide like down to the last minute oh would have been too big but and and, right just because I like so many things like how do I just choose one for my wedding you know what is so what was a was there of was it a vampire theme a black calla lily what was the Uh, no, we just, um, we had super rich jewel tone. So like dark, deep reds and purples and then the black callas. Um, yep. And we really, we only did flowers for the wedding party because okay. we, we got married at um, like a gardens recreational hall. So like, oh, yeah, yeah there's, it was a beautiful fine. background. There's no need yeah. to put stuff on the table. You, you didn't need to do more. Plus you would have had to break it down yeah so yeah it's your wedding (laughs) actually i uh i got my first employer did everything for me oh that was her gift yeah i whenever people say like oh i'm gonna do my own wedding flowers i'm like nope nope you are just (laughs) stressing yourself out don't do it right it's a lot of work it's a lot of a million things to think about so yeah and it was uh incredibly yeah it was incredibly well done so um good yeah, that is that is great. What so when people go to pick flowers, is there any suggestions that you would that that you would give them? Um, yeah, I think if you go into an actual flower shop, mm-hmm. uh, just say you know make me something great, whatever you like for like whatever your budget is, and you uh, know. Oh, just say, sort of sort of give them the budget and go. I want to yeah. send my dad flowers for Father's Day, which is weird but fun. And I'm willing <laughs> to spend 50 bucks. Mm-hmm. And they'll go, okay, well, 
Yeah, they know what's what's freshest. They, you know, really love the material. So they're going to make you something that's like really fun. Okay. Um, and uh, and it also like allows them to sort of to be creative and right. Right. That's Which what is we fun all... for them too. Yeah. Yeah. And yep. then you and it'll probably end up being the best. Like, but if there was a, a flower that like if I said and no carnations, because there will be <laughs> that, there will be there will be black backlash and mm -hmm. uh, they will just go, OK. Yeah, I mean, just tell them what you what you definitely don't want, right? And, and if there was something you did want, yeah. And because I think one time I went in and I was going to get flowers, and they were out of season, which mm -hmm. is weird because I I thought that everything was always in season because of I, I mean, know. especially in California, right? Oh, no, I was at Parkway Floral in South Milwaukee, Wisconsin, oh. and uh, so in South Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Parkway Floral, and you go in and you're like, do you have any daisies? And they're like, no. We do not. And uh, <laughs> we have carnations. And mm -hmm. I was like, Nancy Cation would not enjoy this. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, but if there's but if there's a, a flower you definitely want and if they don't have it, they will usually just suggest something comparable. Right. Yes. Yeah. Like because if they don't have any tulips, they'll be like, well, you know, these sort of teacup roses or something or mm -hmm. some other. Yeah, I mean, probably like the most sought after flower any time of year is uh, peonies because they're so like big and lush and some of them are fragrant. I can't um, even picture a peony. What does a peony look like? They're, gonna, yeah, they're I'm round gonna... and fluffy, but and, in a floral way. All right, in a, in a flower-like <laughs> way. Yes. And, uh, oh, oh, weird. You know what they look like? What? Me, is a really big carnation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I am afraid that I don't know anything about flowers. Uh, so, you might need to do a side by side. <laughs> yeah, because this is, I mean, here's some peonies, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I, I like the idea of, of, of sort of the a multicolor one. Mm -hmm. like, like this one seems to have a lot of different colors attached to it. Those, that's a Sarah Bernhardt. So, um, when flowers all get their own individual names, I don't know what she did to get a peony named after her. Right. But that is, yeah. Those are a long standing, like tried and true variety. So, those peonies, season or not, you can usually find them. Wait, Sarah Bernhardt? Sarah. Yeah. I think she was an actress in, in England in the early 1800s, late 1800s. Really? Yeah, Sandra Bernhardt, of course, stand-up comic. Ah, uh, Sarah right. Bernhardt, Sarah Bernhardt, I think, was a famous actress in on on the stage in London. I can't I'm remember. Have to check her out. Yeah, I can't remember the years, but so she people would constantly give her flowers because she was an actress and she was, mm -hmm. you know, again, I have a lot of big gestures. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you, the the English definitely have, you know. They go way back with their floral knowledge and cultivating. Um, so there's a lot of English florists that, you know, set the standard. Have you have you ever wanted to go to like the Netherlands and see the tulips? Oh, yes. Is that there... actually uh, is another like really fun story. Um, when I first started teaching floral design, it was with uh, Flower School New York and um, I was like running a small shop for them. So the students, the professional students could come and like run a shop, right? But what to do in between classes. So I was there, right? And to help out when they were there. And um, so uh, Flower School pre-pandemic did an annual trip to Holland. So you could see the fields oh. and you could see the processing and packing and everything. And um, I ordered flowers for the shop while the owner was there with a group of students. So the box, and he saw them going by on the conveyor belt. So he grabbed one and wrote, hi, Barbara, on the box. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it's it's like such a big world, but also such a small world, you know? So much so. It's, uh, do you think that you'll get to go now that the, that, now that the pandemic's kind of winding down? Yeah, I think um, even last year, some people, some designers started taking small groups to um, the Netherlands, to Mexico, to Spain. And there's uh, there are schools in other parts of the world. So I think it would be fantastic to go to 
like Japan and study floral design there for a bit, you know. Would you ever, like a, are, are there museums, are there like floral museums sort of like, like I mean, I'm sure like the history of the tulip thing in the Netherlands is so, mm-hmm. is so sort of like I know it. Uh, right. but there's yeah. but there's like I'm, I'm sure there's more obscure things but it would be amazing like I would like to go to Indonesia mm-hmm. and and see sort of the natural flowers you know yeah um, yeah there because I'm sure you know six of them want to kill you but uh because <laughs> uh, there are there's um because a lot of things in Indonesia want to kill you not just the mm-hmm. government and um <laughs> so but the um yeah. So have you, besides Mexico, have you done any, are there dream places that you want to go to? Uh, for, or, I yeah. mean, I just, the uh, like natural environment in Hawaii just blows me away, even though I've, I haven't been there. I haven't um, been there either. Yeah. But I hear it yeah. is, it's supposed to be like, we have a pulmaria that somebody mm-hmm. brought us a stick back mm-hmm. from, and it grew. Because it's Los Angeles and things just yeah, grow. Yeah, California. Uh-huh. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> so jealous. <laughs> and so it when it flowers, I'm just like, and I have a friend who's Hawaiian, and she's like, "Oh, I did not know that you had." I was like, "Would you like to make a flower necklace?" And she's like, mm-hmm. "Stop talking." I'm just saying it's <laughs> beautiful, Jackie. <laughs> like, All right, I'm not. I'm not. And uh, but uh, like her family is Hawaiian. Hawaiian Mm -hmm. right I mean and um and so she goes there a lot and says it is gorgeous yeah so um so I I do follow you know it's the age of social media so I follow um a bunch of shops in England which I think would be super cool to go see in person oh that's Uh, neat like what's a what's a good what's a good Instagram account in England um there's a big school called McQueen's and they're they are like if you want to see a top-notch made hand tied it's yeah. mcqueens they just okay. they're the and biggest mc they have so much stuff in them mm-hmm. queens plural yeah yeah okay yeah um and i'm actually i'm gonna go to chile in a couple of weeks and um chile you know has been growing economically uh in the past few years they just had their first uh democratic election so they're oh, out from under them regime Uh, my mom's Chilean and um so I'm gonna go down and I I would really love to meet a couple of flower shops that are you know they're newer it's more like the style and type of work we've been doing here okay Um, it's just really cool to see it like spread and how the styles change and people can do things with like totally different types of flowers but it there's always a commonality you know right how has how I mean we're pushing the hour, but I, I, I need to know this is, <laughs> yeah. uh, who, what, how has it changed? In the, so in if you like the last 30 years. Yeah. If, um, you could go to Milwaukee and mm-hmm. see traditional floral design, right. Which again, are like your lilies, roses, carnations, baby's breath, chrysanthemums. Okay. Or what's become more, um, like mainstream in the past decade or so are like more delicate uh natural flowers so like ranunculus uh cosmos poppies like you know things are very delicate I think people are really embracing the ephemerality of flowers it doesn't have to be like they have to last for a week it's you know (laughs) right because poppies if you touch them sometimes they'll it'll just fall off yeah yep and Mm -hmm. so but they are gorgeous they are right super delicate you know so 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 more of a delicate Welcome to Hanoi, 1974. I don't know if you can hear the <laughs> helicopters in Van Nuys, but there they are. Um, but um, I love the idea of those sort of, sort of mm-hmm. like, like baby's breath, but not, but like, uh, but like a bunch of different kind of actual kind of wildflowers. So they feel more yeah. wild. Yeah. Yep. So it's more, I think people are, you know, where in years past, it was like, give me a dozen roses for 50 bucks, right? Now it's like, I will spend, a customer will spend $150 and they really appreciate the artistry and like the colors that are used, the shapes. So that, that's like what I see spreading in the world now. And it's, it's just super cool. What's, what's a favorite bouquet, bouquet that you've made recently that, that you were kind of really psyched about that you got to, 
use what flowers were in it and how did it end up um <laughs> so i'm a big uh like fantasy nerd right like old like lord of the rings Oh, yeah, there's another that. dark forest. Another dark <laughs> forest on the on the hopper. Yes. Um. So I it was a while ago, but uh, I made for my sister's wedding. She said, like, just make whatever you think is me. And uh, so I took succulents and glued um pieces of gold foil onto them. Oh, cool. And then mixed them with stuff with like peonies and like thistle. So things that were both very soft, but also like kind of rough and like rustic right um and i i did like sort of a tester uh a month before and sent her a photo and she said you literally are i have him crying right now like this is Aww. so perfect so uh, uh so succulents with with yeah. different flowers as mm -hmm. as the greenery as opposed to just a big fern yeah yeah right yeah because they you we like uh, same shapes, so succulents around, peonies around. So, oh, that makes yeah. sense. They kind of shadow each other or, or mirror yeah. each other. Mm -hmm. That's neat. I have to say, Barbara Millie, this has been a delightful hour of talking about Thank flowers. You. Is there I'm anything? Glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. What? Uh, what? Uh, is there anything that I should? Well, it's uh, it's her birthday, so it's B M C M E L E, and. Yes. Uh, and that is your Twitter handle, and mm -hmm. um, and you're in you're in New York working at a, a floral shop. What was the shop in the Upper West Side that you worked at? Um, it, it is a new, a different iteration now, but it's called Posies. You can okay. still get really great hand tied bouquets, affordable hand tied bouquets there. And, and, what, and what's across street? Uh, it's on Amsterdam between seventy eighth and seventy seventh. Okay. Okay. Because well, my friend uh, Jenny Bergman owns a, a toy store on 84th and Amsterdam. Oh, yeah. Called West Side Kids. Yeah. So cool. It's, it's uh, Tita Faye made fun of it in her book because it has a lot of sort of handmade toys. There's like mm -hmm. wooden toys. And Tita Faye was like, I love this toy store. But, you know, you go in and the kids are like, wood? <laughs> <laughs> so. I want the bright things. <laughs> right. That's not shiny enough. But she it's a great toy store because it has it's sort of like going to like a, a museum gift shop when you go to <laughs> West Side Kids because yeah. it has such weird, like awesome, you know, kids books. And then, you know, it's like science kits. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's just a little more glamorous than uh, than than uh, Target. So um, thank God for that. Yeah. Needed. Always needed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to tell me about flowers before we call it? Um, I did send flowers to Tina Fey once on oh, behalf of you? Steve Martin. Yeah. Oh, that's, well. that is one of the coolest parts of being a florist in New York City. You, you have these brushes with, you know, fame or celebrity. Right, right. It's I like uh, I think when I was 19, I was cleaning the windows of the flower shop and I they were on uh, Columbus. So they're super long, narrow windows. And I was on the, the top of this high ladder. And right when I stepped off the ladder and turned around, Robin Williams was walking by in a bowler hat and with a bicycle. <laughs> and I was so like, oh my God, he's right there. You know? right, right. And I, uh, he just said, hello, and kept walking. And um, <laughs> when I went home and told my family, they were like, why did you invite him to dinner? And I was like, well, I'm not going to invite That's Robin weird. Williams to you dinner are, in Queens. You are correct. <laughs> This is yeah. not, yes, the my favorite year. Uh, so, which yeah. is a great movie where uh, Peter <laughs> O'Toole gets invited to Queens to dinner. Uh, so, um, <laughs> I have to say, you chose wisely. Um, I thought that when you were in the window, uh, you were maybe moving the reindeer around and Santa came by and told you that you had him in the wrong order. Um, but <laughs> I think Robin Williams is kind of way better, <laughs> way better than Santa. Well, it's true. I um, I was eating at Barney Greengrass one time in the Upper West Side and Francis McDormand was sitting at a table on the other side of the room. Oh and I gosh. almost got up and walked over and lost my <laughs> mind. And then I decided, much like you, to leave her alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she's trying to have a little lunch. Yep. Smoked fish. She's trying to live her life, Jackie. Why don't you leave her alone? <laughs> Just let her be a human. 
<laughs> Barbara Milley, thank you so much for doing the dork for us. This was awesome. Thank you for having me on, Jackie. And right. uh, I would like to uh, plug, I started a podcast. Oh, did um, you? It's, yes, it's called Flower Stories. Oh my God. And um, first episode uh, publication by the end of the month. Um, and I'm just gonna be talking to people in the industry. So wholesalers, designers, shop owners. Um, oh my God. Yeah. Yes, Flower Stories. Uh, yeah, send me whatever social media tag that that will be. And mm -hmm. uh, I will put that in the notes. It's and a flower stories org on Instagram. Org on ORG on Instagram. So it's yeah, at flower, flower stories ORG. Yeah. Okay. Because um, uh, somebody seven years ago took flower stories and posted five things and then hasn't done anything since. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, oh. The yeah, audacity. Makes, the audacity. <laughs> it makes me want to scream at the sky like Wolverine. Um, <laughs> you're not wrong. But flower stories, you could get in on the ground floor of flower stories podcast, uh, everyone. Uh, so get in Boop, on bleep. that. <laughs> and you know the rules out there. Take care of each other. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh, my God. Thank we you. Why don't we just call that as the end of the show?